There are many different types of terrestrial biomes as shown in this graphic. The green areas represent tropical rainforests. The orange areas are savannas. The yellow areas are deserts. The dark brown areas are deciduous forests. The pink areas are evergreen forests. The tan areas are grasslands. The red areas are shrublands. The dark green areas are the taiga. The light blue are the tundra. And the dark blue areas represent mountain zones. Notice where each of these biomes is located relative to the equator. There are interesting patterns here. But now, let's see what a biome actually is. A biome is a large region characterized by a specific climate and certain types of plants and animals. It contains characteristic communities of plants and animals that result from and are adapted to the climate. Now in this picture we see how temperature, precipitation, and relative distance from the equator affect the biome type. The bottom axis represents precipitation, the left side represents temperature, and the right side represents relative distance from the equator. Tropical regions are near the equator and arctic regions are far from the equator. This is referred to as latitude. Forests are located on the left side, deserts are located on the right side, and grasslands are in the middle range of precipitation. There are several factors that affect where resources such as plants and animals are distributed. These include climate, geography, latitude and altitude, nutrient availability, and soil type. The worldwide distribution of biomes can change. Changing temperatures and precipitation may cause changes in plant life, thus changing the biome. Global climate change may result in changes in biome distribution. Seven kinds of terrestrial biomes include tundra, boreal forest, also called taiga, temperature deciduous forest, temperate deciduous forest, tropical rainforest, grassland, desert, and shrubland. These are pictures of tundra. Notice no trees. The tundra is a cold, treeless biome with low growing plants. The Arctic tundra in the northern hemisphere is found in the northernmost regions of Russia, Canada, Scandinavia, and Alaska. The Antarctic tundra in the southern hemisphere is located along the edges of Antarctica and nearby islands. The climate in the tundra is cold, windy, and dry. The winters are long and the summers are short with short growing seasons. The soil is characterized by permafrost, which is permanently frozen soil. This is a climate diagram, also called a climatogram, that is typical of the tundra. The months are along the bottom axis. The precipitation in millimeters is on the left axis. The temperature in degrees Celsius is on the right axis. The green line shows temperature variations for the year. The blue bars show precipitation. Notice the temperatures generally are below or very close to zero degrees Celsius. The temperatures are lower in winter and increase during the summer. The precipitation is very low generally and increases slightly during the summer. Light availability in the tundra depends on the season. At some points during the summer, there are 24 hours of daylight. Then in winter, there is 24 hours of darkness for a period of time. Light intensity is low. This diagram shows the 24 hour daylight or darkness depending on the season. This diagram shows the sun rays spread over a larger area, which results in the lower intensity. The permafrost, permanently frozen subsoil, prevents proper drainage and doesn't allow plant roots to penetrate it.
Plant types characteristic of the tundra include lichens, mosses, grasses, sedges, reeds, and a few dwarf trees. Plant adaptations include stunted growth, shallow branching roots, perennial plants, and long day plants. Perennials are plants that bloom for a shorter period of time. The active layer in the tundra where plants grow is very shallow. Long day plants bloom when periods of darkness are short. Since summer in the tundra has shorter periods of darkness, this triggers the perennial long day plants to bloom. Tundra animals include the Arctic hare, the Arctic fox, snowy owl, polar bears, and caribou. Animal adaptations in the tundra include camouflage, where the coats are white or lighter in winter and darker in summer. Adaptations to the cold include an insulating layer of fat, shorter body extremities such as ears to reduce heat loss, and behavioral adaptations such as staying in tunnels within snowbanks. As just stated, the body extremities are shorter in tundra animals. This is Allen's rule. Animals adapted to cold climates have shorter limbs and body appendages than animals adapted to warm climates. In the diagram, we see that the ears and legs of the rabbit in the cold climate are shorter than the warmer climates. This helps them to retain heat. Humans impact the tundra in many ways. Migration routes are disturbed when roads and pipelines are built. Oil spills and pollution contaminate the fragile environment. Hunting and fishing decrease animal populations. Nesting sites and spawning grounds can be destroyed. This graph shows the general trend of increasing temperatures in the Arctic tundra between 1880 and approximately 2010. There are three basic types of forest biomes, the boreal forest, also called the taiga, the temperate deciduous forest, and the tropical rainforest. All forest biomes are dominated by trees and are areas of high productivity and biodiversity. The taiga is a forest biome made up mainly of coniferous evergreen trees. These trees tolerate cold winters and short growing seasons. The taiga is located generally between 50 degrees north and 60 degrees north latitude in Europe, Russia, and North America. The climate in the taiga has temperatures that are higher than the tundra. The growing season is longer, the winters aren't as severe or as long as in the tundra, and precipitation is higher than in the tundra. This climate diagram is typical of a boreal forest. Notice, temperatures in the summer are higher than in the tundra and precipitation is higher. The summer days are shorter and light intensity is higher because this biome is closer to the equator than the tundra, so the sun rays are more intense. In the top graph, we see precipitation in the taiga. In the bottom graph, we see a comparison of temperature and photo period, which is basically length of day. Notice that day length stays relatively constant throughout the year with slightly longer days in the summer. The taiga soil is low in nutrients, very acidic and sandy. Therefore, it isn't very good for agriculture. Plant types include pine trees, sphagnum moss, fungi, cedar trees, spruce trees, lichens, firs, ferns, and mosses. There are several plant adaptations for life in the taiga. The leaves are needles instead of broad leaves and are covered with a thick cuticle. The tree branches are flexible so they don't break easily when snow accumulates in the tree. 
The trees are evergreen, so they don't shed all of their leaves at one time. And the trees produce a sticky resin to protect against infestations and injury. There are a variety of animals found in the taiga, including foxes, moose, owls, squirrels, chipmunks, and bears. Animal adaptations to the conditions in this biome include camouflage, thick coats, and hibernation. The main human impact on the taiga is the cutting of trees and forest fires. This decreases populations of organisms and destroys habitats. The temperate deciduous forest is a biome with warm summers and cold winters with over 39 inches of precipitation annually. Temperate deciduous forests are located between 30 degrees north and 60 degrees north latitude in the eastern U.S. and most of Europe. The climate in the temperate deciduous forest is moderate, with rainfall evenly distributed throughout the year. There are four well-defined seasons, and the growing season is longer than in the taiga and tundra, usually four to six months. In this climate diagram, you see the higher temperatures and more evenly distributed rainfall throughout the year. Light intensity is higher and the average day length is shorter. Winters are shorter than in the taiga. The soil in the temperate deciduous forest is very fertile. Humus is the nutrient-rich layer of soil produced by fallen leaves and organic matter decay. Water movement through the soil circulates the nutrients. In the diagram on the left, you see a soil profile representing this biome. The humus layer and topsoil is usually deep, allowing plant roots to penetrate. The picture shows the deep, dark color of the humus layer. Plant types in the, in the temperate deciduous forest include various types of trees, including maples, beech, oak, and poplar. Deciduous means the trees lose their leaves in fall. Plant adaptations include the shedding of leaves in order to conserve energy during winter and flower production, which increases fertilization. Animals found in this biome include deer, hawks, coyote, raccoon, and bears. Animal adaptations include camouflage, thick tails for props and balance, nocturnal activity, staying near the protective cover of the forest, and staying in herds. The main human impact on the temperate deciduous forest is the clear cutting of trees in order to use the land for agricultural purposes since the soil is so fertile. The tropical rainforest is a warm and wet biome with little seasonal variation and high precipitation. This biome is located between 20 degrees north and 20 degrees south latitude. The climate in the tropical rainforest is moist and warm with high humidity. The temperature remains relatively constant within a 24 hour period. In the climate diagram, you see the temperature remains relatively constant throughout the year with a slight increase between June and August. The, the precipitation is much higher than the other biomes. Light availability is consistent throughout the whole year. In this diagram, the layers of a tropical rainforest are shown. The forest floor is characterized by shade loving plants since light doesn't penetrate to this layer very well. The understory is characterized by vines and climbing plants. The canopy layer is where most animals are found, and the emergent layer is characterized by tall trees. The soil in the tropical rainforest is infertile because the humus that forms quickly decomposes when exposed to light. Heavy rains may also wash away the soil nutrients. 
In the soil profile on the right, notice the very thin top layer and relatively shallow root systems. Plants found in tropical rainforests include trees, vines, ferns, and orchids. An epiphyte is a plant that grows on another plant but is not parasitic. They are very common in the tropical rainforest. Plant adaptations include thin, smooth bark, large leaves with pointed tips for allowing water to drain off, and buttress roots for support. Animals found in this biome include eagles, bats, monkeys, snakes, frogs, leopards, and capybaras. Animal adaptations include camouflage, being selective eaters, and being brightly colored, which usually is a protective warning sign. Human impact on the tropical rainforest includes clear cutting for lumber and farming and the trade in animals and plants. This graphic shows causes of tropical deforestation between 2000 and 2005. Using the land for cattle ranching and subsistence farming are the main causes. This picture shows an area in a tropical rainforest that was cleared of trees and then terraced for agricultural purposes.